Welcome to this video on AC500 Controller Basic. In this video, we will show how to establish a Profibus DP connection. After completing this video, you will be able to configure various AC500 remote IL modules via Profibus DP communication network. Utilize the remote I.O. data in the user program. Use the online diagnostic functionalities available in Control Builder Plus configuration software. Here you could see an example as to how to connect a DP slave to a Profibus DP master. The CM572 module mounted just left to the CPU is acting as a Profibus master. Up to four DP masters could be connected to one CPU, and in this way, we could establish four independent Profibus lines. In this example, an ABB robot, one ABB drive and two S500 bus modules are used as Profibus slaves. They are connected to the DP master CM572 module, using the standard Profibus cable, and appropriate connectors. One S500 bus module could accommodate up to 10 IL modules, in any order. Another connection possibility is the use of ABB Profibus field bus plug, between the DP master and the slave stations. This field bus plug enables us to connect field bus neutral slaves from ABB, like motor starters, circuit breakers, soft starter, wireless sensors, and so on via Profibus DP. Additional field bus plugs are available to support other field bus protocols, such as CanOpen and DeviceNet. The CM572 DP Master, that we discuss in this example, supports both DPv0 and DPv1 communication type. This means, it could support both cyclic and acyclic data transfer between the master and slaves. Up to 32 stations or nodes including one master, and 31 slaves could be operated in one Profibus segment. Segment-to-segment -segment connection is possible with the help of Profibus repeaters. In this way, one could go up to 125 slaves. The stations are connected in line topology, and the transmission rate depends on the segment length. The fastest rate is 12 megabits per second for a distance of 100 meter or less. Profibus diagnostic messages generated by the DP master could be seen from the CPU diagnostic screen, or using Control Builder Plus. In addition, the Profibus function blocks could also be monitored for error analysis. Now we would see how to configure Profibus communication inside a project using Control Builder Plus. As you could see, from the configuration screen, here the mouse is positioned in the branch for communications modules. By default, all the four communication slots are filled with TA524 dummy modules. In this case, the Profibus Master Module CM572DP is mounted just next to the CPU. In order to change the default configuration, right-click on the first slot, and choose the option Plug Device. And now a dialog box with the module list appears. Select the option Field Buses, and then Profibus and CM572DP from the branch DP Master. Click the button Plug Device to valid your choice. As a result a Profibus Master system is created. Now, let's see the configuration steps to include a slave station in this project. We intend to connect a remote I.O. station with analog and digital inputs modules using DP Slave Bus Module CI542DP. Right-click the mouse on the CM572 Master and choose the option Add Device. Highlight CI542DP, and press the Add Device button. With the integration of necessary GSD file, all other DP slaves that are default not available in Control Builder, and could be configured. This is true even, for third-party I.O. stations, and drives integration. Now, to add the I.L. modules on the slave station, right-click on CI542DP module in the configuration tree and with the Add Device option. Add all the IL modules. Do keep in mind, 
the order in which they are physically mounted on the I.O. rack. In order to set the bus parameters, for the master, click on the branch CM572 DP in the project tree, and double click on CM572 master. Necessary profile settings, for the master, is done here in this dialog box, and in our case, we leave it to the default settings. Should you desire changes, click on Edit Parameter Values, and make necessary modifications. Similarly double-click on CI542DP branch to set the bus parameters for the slave. Important setting, here is the Profibus address, which is to be done as per the hardware settings made in the slave module. Rotary switches are available on the slave to make the address settings, and once again we leave it to default address 2. In order to configure the onboard IOs of this module, double-click on the branch CI542IO. In the CI542IO configuration tab, necessary changes could made by double-click on the parameter field and in the column value. Select the right values from the drop-down list. In this example we will keep it to the default values. Now, click on tab CI542IO mapping. For this module, Symbols could be created byte-wise and or bit-wise. These symbols will appear in the global variable list. Here we define symbols for two digital inputs and one digital output. Just for easy recognition, we use the module name and the symbol as a prefix. Similarly, we would continue with the configuration for the analog module AI523. In the AI523 configuration tab, we have to modify the default channel settings, according to actually connected signal types. In this example the channel 0 is wired to 0 to 20 mA signal. Double click on the parameter field and in the column value, select the corresponding parameter from the drop down list. After that we create a symbol for the signal. Click on tab AI523 IO mapping. Here we define symbol for the analog input 0. Just for easy recognition, we use the module name and the symbol as a prefix. In the same way, we will create configuration for the digital input module DI524. In this example, all the 16 channels are wired to input signals. Symbols can be created as double word, word, byte and bit. Here we create a symbol for a word variable and these 16 bits will reflect the status of the 16 inputs. This completes our configuration procedure. The next step will be creation of the program. To create the up-to-date hardware configuration file, and to open the code assist project part, just double-click on the AC500 loop icon. Click on the button update. Now, the code assist project is opened. In the tab resources under global variables, we could see all the previously configured symbols inserted automatically. The symbols are organized in variable lists, sorted by devices. When we double click on a module branch, its variable list becomes visible with only the mapped signals. Please note that the variable list would not be available unless one symbol has been mapped. A sample project has been created, in Structure Text Editor, and downloaded to the controller. If you would like to know, more about the project creation, and development, please have a look at our other videos. Titled ABBAC 500 PLC The First Project, and ABBAC 500 PLC, The First Commissioning. The framed statements have the following functions. In the first line. The value of the digital input channel 0 of DI542DP is allocated to its output channel 0. In the second line, the value of the analog input channel 0 of AI523 is allocated to a local variable of data type integer.
Once, we establish connection to the PLC, we could see the data cyclically exchanged between the master and slaves. For a cyclic data exchange including extended diagnostics we could use dedicated function blocks. Additional profibles diagnostics is provided when we establish a second connection to the PLC, Out of Control Builder Plus. By clicking on CM572 DP branch, we get more diagnostic information. The option Bus Diagnosis shows the state of the master and bus supervision data. We can see the master is currently exchanging data with slave. Station Diagnosis option shows us an overview of all profibles slaves. Currently slave number 2 is working properly. If you wish extended slave diagnostics, you could double click on CI542 DP in the tree and enable it. Thank you for attending this video. If you want to learn more about a scalable AC500 controller, please use the following link. Or if you have an additional technical questions, you can contact our helpline support. For general comments and questions about this video, don't hesitate to contact us.